in this lesson, we're proving that the constructions that we have been using are, in fact, valid constructions. And since we did these constructions before we ever talked about why triangles are congruent, um, we were kind of doing these constructions on faith, if you will. Um, but now that we have some properties about triangles and what we know about congruent triangles, now we have the means by which we can justify those constructions. So before we actually get into those compass and straight edge constructions, um, we're using a reflective device to construct a perpendicular line. Now, what they have illustrated here is a really fantastic tool that I don't own. So I'm using an actual mirror. So if you want to follow along and you have a small mirror that you can use at home to kind of explore this activity the same way I am, I would, I would suggest that you do so. Otherwise, just kind of follow along with what I'm doing and try to make sure, I hope you have your headphones on. Um, so the first thing it says is place the reflective device along line L and look through the device to locate the image of point P on the opposite side of line L. So since I'm using a mirror rather than this handy dandy convenient device, um, I'm doing it on the coordinate grid. All right, so I'm putting my mirror, notice I'm lining my mirror up with my Y axis. All right, so when I look through my mirror, I see that its image, the reflection of this point when I'm looking in the mirror, it is three spaces to the left of the origin, which is here. It's three spaces to the left of it and two spaces up, which is right here. And so this was my point P, this was my line L, and this is the P prime that I just found. And the question is asking me, explain why P, P prime, this line, is perpendicular to line L. And because of the definition of reflection, I know that L is perpendicular bisector of P to P prime. And now it's asking me to put the reflective device so that it passes through Q and is approximately perpendicular to line M. So again, I'm doing it on graph paper. Here's my line M. Here's my point P. And what it's asking me to do is approximate that my reflective device is perpendicular to line M. And what I'm looking at in my mirror right now is the line reflecting on itself. So if you're doing this at home with an actual mirror, maybe if you turn the mirror a little bit so that it's not perpendicular, so it's very obviously not perpendicular, you would see that your reflection, the line isn't straight. But when it's perpendicular, your line is straight. And the reason for that is that it's mapping onto itself. So explain why line N is perpendicular to line M is because of the definition, again, of reflection says that the line of reflection which was, in this case, the mirror, is perpendicular to line M. In other words, M could only map onto itself if the line of reflection, again the mirror, is perpendicular to M.
and the reflect question that's asking how can you check that the lines that you drew are perpendicular to lines L and M. Okay, so if I had, back when I had my mirror here and I was, I drew this line, I could check that it's perpendicular by measuring the angles and confirming that they are 90 degrees. So I can measure the angles formed to confirm that 90 degree angles are formed. And now we get into justifying a compass and straight edge construction. So it goes through and recalls how we construct an angle congruent to a given angle. So remember what you're doing here. They started off with this blank ray. They took the compass and marked this arc copied that arc here, changed the compass setting to be this measurement between B and C, and then duplicated that here. So in part B, it's saying sketch and name the two triangles that are created when you co construct a copy of an angle. Well, this point C and this point B so I could say triangle ACB and triangle DFE. What segments do we know are congruent? And explain how we know. Well, we know that AC is congruent to DF and AB is congruent to DE because they're made with the same compass setting. And then we also know that BC is going to be congruent to EF for the same reason. Therefore, the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. It's asking, suppose you used a largest compass setting, larger compass setting to create segment AB than another student did while copying the same angle. So what they're asking is, suppose you used this compass setting to make your random arc. Suppose your classmate used this compass setting. So they're asking if your copied angles will be congruent. And the answer is yes. The triangles, however, will not be congruent. They're asking if this justification uh, would work for an obtuse angle. Yes. In example one, we are proving the angle bisector construction. So remember how we did the construction of an angle bisector. We, do, we drew this random arc using our compass. And then from each of these points, we made further arcs. And so they're asking us to prove that this construction results in the angle bisector. 
So if you think about it, you know that AB and AC are going to be congruent because you used the same compass setting for them. Similarly, you use the same compass setting for CD and BD. You know that segment AD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So that's why these two triangles are congruent. So since those triangles are congruent, you know that angle BD, I'm sorry, BAD and CAD are congruent because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And therefore, by the definition of angle bisector, AD would be the bisector of the original angle A. Similarly here, we're being asked to prove that the construction of the perpendicular bisector is valid. So, once again, remember how you do that construction. You set your compass setting to a little bit more than half, and from this end point, you make the sweeping arc above and below, and from this end point, you make the sweeping arc above and below. And so we know that the point C is equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB because this point was constructed using the same compass setting from A and from B. Uh, same thing as D, but we'll get there momentarily. So if C is equidistant from the endpoints, then by the perpendicular bisector theorem, It lies on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So as I said before, the point D is also equidistant from the segments, the endpoints of segment AB, so it also lies on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. And since two points determine a line, I know that line CD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. In this reflect question, they're asking us in part B, what can we conclude about the measures of the angles made by the intersection of AB and CD? Well, since CD is perpendicular to AB, I know the angles formed are right angles. In this your turn question, it's saying that the construction in part B, back here, is also used to construct the midpoint R of segment MN. How is the proof of this construction different from the proof of the perpendicular bisector construction? Well, the only difference is that we're adding, or we're using, the definition of bisect to conclude that R is the midpoint, MP for midpoint, of segment MN. In number nine, it's asking how would I combine the constructions in example one to construct a 45 degree angle. So construction B, is the construction of a perpendicular bisector. So I could construct a perpendicular bisector to form a 90 degree angle and then I could construct the angle bisector of it. In this elaborate question 10, it's asking us how we could use the, how can we construct a line that is parallel to a given line using the construction of a line, that's a typo, perpendicular to a line. 
Well, let's think about it visually. If I have a line and I am able to construct a line perpendicular to it, I hope you'd realize if I turned my paper and then constructed a line perpendicular to that one, then these two lines would be parallel. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure to talk about that. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is this 11 question where it's asking to use a straight edge and it says a piece of string. Let's just use a compass. So construct an equilateral triangle that has AB as one of its sides. So we've talked about constructing triangles with given side lengths before. If I want my triangle to have this as its side length, well, then I can make an arc to indicate the length of side AB somewhere out here. And it's going to intersect with the arc from A. And when I connect these dots, an equilateral triangle.